Right, moving swiftly on, um, I'm going to start a kit for me now, because as you know it's been about, what, two months since I last built a model kit for me, which is the Siren Raider. So now what Herman's all done, and the house is all done, it's time for a kit for me. As you can see, it is the Star Wars Bandai AT-ST. My wife bought me this for Christmas. This was one of the kits I was going to buy with that £70 I had left from the fair box, so it's pretty nice. And you get a few pictures of what it looks like built up, as you can see. Not bad. Cost £16 from an Amazon seller, Amazon UK seller that was based in Japan. I've laid all the sprues out now. I was taking the base out to have a look at it, and as you can see, it's not much bigger. Well, it's even bigger than my hand. I will be using this base, but I'll be putting on top of it... A spare bit of wood they had from the plank from the Mobius house, Munster house. So that's that. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail of what the bits are because I haven't got a clue myself. You get a Chewbacca figure, which is two halves. The detail ain't too bad on che Chewy. I mean, if you're built, if, you, if you're going to use Chewy, you're going to have to repaint him and detail him. You've got some other bits there, quite detailed. And some bits for the legs and the feet. Again, not too bad detail. Then you get a pilot figure. There's one of them because you get two. They're about 30 mils high. Not bad at all. A bit more feet and legs again. And there's the other driver, I should say. The detail is quite crisp. Not bad. A bit again, a bit more of the leg assembly there as you can see. And then a bit for the main front of the head. This is actually smaller than I expected because I've been looking at pictures on this of the internet and it looks a lot bigger than it actually is. There's a back piece there, a bit of the command module inside. And then two, two of the other sides of the command module. And the top, a bit more of the sides. Not bad. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've still got a, I've got a bit of a cough from when I had the flu. You got uh, decals and stickers. Because I've put stickers on there because I know which one's which. And then you got the instruction booklet which folds out. It's all in Japanese, but the pictures are quite concise. Not bad at all. I mean, there is an English version to this booklet, but I don't know if it's printable. So I might have to either print it or bring it up on my, on my phone when I'm trying to build this model. Well, there it is, guys. Not too bad. Not bad for £16 anyway, so time to get cracking on. Stay with me. Right. As you can see, the belly part is all done. All snapped into place as it says here which is section one and it's that grey section there. Being careful not to cut those little tabs off A6 and A7 you just cut them off right on the edge and just give it a bit of a foil and there's two little tabs on the back of uh, C29 don't cut those off either just cut them off at the, at the end of the little tabs and then just uh, sand them down a bit I mean, it's fairly straightforward as you can see one thing I did want to tell you about is D18 and D28 which is the little singular piece that you put in after the five piece section so there's there's one, there it is there on the one side and on the other there. I had to glue those in because it wasn't very secure. Another thing I want to tell you about is the ribbed tubing sections. There's, there's one there, there's another one there. Like I said, there's about five, I think it's five, is it? Uh, one, one, two, three, four, and five, yeah. Be very careful with those ribbed tubings when you cut them off the sprue. 
because you will need when you cut them off you will need to sh um, fall them down a bit just be very very careful indeed because they're very very flimsy also when mounting them into the holes there there and underneath I, d I found it easy just to put a drop of glue in because again they wasn't very secure so I'll be very careful with those but that's the belly section all done stay with me construction continues on the ATST and as you can see I've done a bit more work and the right leg is complete basically following the number three section everything is pretty much sandwich plated a um, bit of a concern with that one there number A uh, 20 you push those two bits together with A20 that connects at that little boy joint there it's very flimsy with that little rod because you push that little rod into that section once you've met them two and I was thinking well that's very easy to pop out until you come to this section with D12 and D13 because there's a little pin at the back that actually holds that into place once pushed together but when I push the th three pieces together there it wasn't a very secure fit so I've had to glue it into place in the little ball joints and um, wrap a bit of tape around it but as you can see that section now is on there is very secure indeed even though it look, does look quite flimsy another little issue I had was with a foot piece you push the top onto the bottom once you put that section on and as you can see, it doesn't look very, it doesn't, hasn't pushed right in 100% into place. I pushed on the front, I pushed on the sides, and I pushed on the back, and eventually it clipped into place. And also the little fork moves as well, moves on its own, as you can see. It's like it's only a little ball joint inside, and you just push that together. But I'm getting there slowly. Stay with me. Right, welcome back guys. As you can see, the left leg is all done. Going on the same construction as the right leg, not too bad at all. As you can see, they both look the same. I've also put them knee guards on as well. And those little extra bits that go into the side of there. I've also put the um, what looks like a ball support, two halves. There's a bit of a seam issue there and there on the front there, as you can see where my finger is. But to be honest, I've sanded it down a bit, but once the headpiece goes on, you're not going to see that seam, so that's something. And you can see that I've got all the um, cockpit details ready now is where the intricate painting starts stay with me right I've had a bit of a moment on the legs on the ATST I've screwed up I've put this section in back to front because that little mounting washer there is supposed to be on the front as you can see there and then that little mounting cap that hole filling cap should be on the outside it's actually going to be on the inside me being the dozy twonk that I actually am you can also see if you look at the the back caliper of the legs that one's slightly deformed because I tried to prise that apart and um, I thought, you know what, I'm not going to re-tech all the foot apart and then re-tech all that apart just to correct that little mounting washer at the back. So my ATST is going to be a slight variant. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. As you can see, I've painted the interior 
of the com cockpit command area whatever you want to call it as you can see I've gone with the olive on that patterned area pretty much gone with Tamiya XF80 Royal Light Grey primed it as I said and then went all over um, this section here I did that in the 128 US Compass Grey this section and then did the little squares in black and then just touched up round uh, white and red for those panels and you can see that I've um, picked out the various little panels with little dot panels with the various colors you got uh, red you got a uh, white orange green um, yellow there's a bit of blue in there as well just to bring out those little light panels and you got the other side as well again with the orange and the green and the yellows and the blues and the reds you can see that I've picked all that out um, olive for the seats white for that bit of detailing bluish grey for the joysticks um, and then a bit of olive, a bit of red, a bit of white and then I'll just give it a black wash to bring out the detail as you can see not bad at all and then I did the back wall um, again with the um, XF80 and then I just picked out the um, greyish blue and the red and the white give the uh, panel a big black wash and then I made up some white wash and just white wash that panel and then put a bit of black wash on top of that not too bad at all and then come the drivers using the um, Folkart Greenscape I did the helmets as you can see it took about three or four coats because originally it wouldn't go on but eventually it did there's flesh for the face and then I did black for the mask the mask the bloody goggles um, I did the 128 Humbrol US Compass Grey for the uniform you got gloves black you got the um, actual um, harnesses in the olive and then the boots and black as well now I filled in the back as you can see with some um, plasticine and then just went over with a primer but the interior is all done very intricate painting indeed especially on those bloody uh, drivers stay with me right the command area stroke cockpit is all together um, on the back wall where it sits onto the bottom plate where the drivers go I had to widen the hole slightly and then using my push clamp just uh, pushing the back wall down eventually it went into place underneath here and underneath here and you could probably just make out that little groove there and on the other side is a little groove the little side walls have a, like a little uh, tab which needs to be pushed perfect into those grooves both sides to get them to sit into place and then using the dashboard plate because you don't mount it on right away I've had to put the dashboard plate into straight away because this no section here didn't want to push together all the way in so I've just pushed it together and using the nose plate stroke um, dashboard to hold it into place also just put a drop of glue underneath the bottoms of the drivers just to hold them into place but that is one complete command area stay with me <laughs> 